privilege to be back with you, Madam Rajavi, and all of you. I must say, you know, we have met many times, and I wish we could even say that the regime is as bad as ever, except this time, I must say, we acknowledge the regime has gotten much worse. And we cannot ignore any longer the disintegration of, the, of society in Iran that is being caused by the oppression of the regime. Executions continue at an alarming, really disgusting and dishonorable rate. The use of Hezbollah, the Quds Force, and the IRGC, not only in Iran, but their use of those security assets and those tools of oppression around the world has increased. We know that they are using those very forces to support the Assad regime in Syria to commit genocide against its own people, and we know that they use those very forces to plot the assassination of an ambassador in Washington in the United States. The Iranian regime seeks to extend their policy of oppression and influence not only in the region, in places like Yemen and Bahrain, to name a few, but also in the, in the Western world. We can no longer simply watch. The time for regime change is today. It's now. When we think about who are the soldiers on the front lines, we know that certainly it's the Iranian people who are living daily with the oppression. But certainly we must think about the Ashrafis, those in liberty, and certainly the seven who are being held, who have been kidnapped. To them, I say, to those in Iran, to those in Liberty and Ashraf and to the seven, we will never forget you. We will continue to work every single day to ensure your safety and your release. You know, every time we meet here, I am touched and really taken aback by the memorial of those killed fighting for freedom. And I am saddened because every time we meet here, there are new pictures and there are new names on those memorials. That cannot continue. But I must say, as I was preparing to come here, I was thinking about what courage means and how we define courage. The dictionary defines it as the quality of mind that enables one to face danger with confidence and resolution and bravery. And to those in Liberty and Ashraf and the seven who have been kidnapped, and to their families, your courage is our inspiration. Madam Rajavi, you have devoted your life, and you are an example of that courage, and we thank you for your inspiration. When we leave this hall and we go home, we will carry their courage in our hearts, and we will carry their courage as our inspiration. But when we go home, we must do more than talk about it. We must do more than meet. It is time, like we heard from our colleague in Northern California, to demand our government not only take a stand, but now begin to take real action for a difference. I am especially proud of my American colleagues who stood up here, to the, delegate, the many delegations from California and Texas and Georgia, Massachusetts, New York. I saw your flags. We must demand that the United States government keep its commitments and keep its promises. It is time for the U U.S. government to take seriously its obligation to those in Liberty and Ashraf. It is time for the American government to not only protect those who are there, 
but to grant them political refugee status and bring them here. It is time for the American government to hold the Maliki government not only accountable, but to punish the, the Maliki government for what it has permitted, the atrocities it's permitted at both Liberty and Ashraf. <laughs> Finally, an issue near and dear to my heart, as you know. Let me speak directly to the many women here, the women at Liberty, and Ashraf and the six of the seven who have been kidnapped. Women, in addition to Mrs. Rajavi, who is a role model, women play a very special role and bear a very special responsibility in the demand for freedom. The women of this struggle, in a very special way, hold the keys to the future free Iran equal with their ma male counterparts. And that equality is what assures your success. Thank you.